In today's video, why you're never gonna look like your inspiration. They can't help but notice Say my name till they wear it out Envy is the focus There's no reason to doubt You probably follow I'm on the new wave You're looking hollow You say you're living fine all the time, but I know what's real. What's going on, guys? This is Paul Rebella from ProPhysique.com, and happy Monday afternoon. What a weekend I just had in Austin, Texas, and I was surrounded by a lot of people that I've never actually been around in person. And when you see people on the internet, um, you can you can get a kind of a sense for who they are. But when you hang out with somebody for three or four days in a row going out to eat, going to the gym, you know, riding in cars. This is when you really get to know people. And the one thing that I was struck by is just how damn muscular and lean and freaky looking some of the guys I was around are. And it really got me thinking. Years ago, probably would have got me down a little bit, right? Because I hold myself to a really high standard. I really want to be like as big and muscular and lean as possible. And then you get around some guys that seem like they haven't been training as long. They haven't been putting in as much effort. They might not know as much as you. And yet, they are pure animals. And so I think this is one thing that gets lost commonly amongst us as competitors, bodybuilders, is that we get so focused on what, sh what we should be doing. What is the right diet? What is the right training program? Well, I got bad news. You can do everything right. You can hit your macros. You can meal time. You can follow the perfect training protocol. You can periodize your training. And there's somebody out there that's going to put in half the work and look twice as good as you, right? And I used to get upset by that. I used to get, you know, disappointed in the knowledge that, well, those guys look better than me. And when I was younger, I used to probably say things like, well, they're probably on steroids or, you know, they probably did something, um, that I wouldn't be willing to do to get to that point. But at the end of the day, genetics make up the greatest part of why we look the way we do. We as human beings have such a diverse look and feel. And so when I was around people this weekend, you know, Nick Bear, the dude's enormous and he's lean and he's strong, right? Uh, Russell Orhe, the dude is going to crush nationals this year. You know, my client, George Rosado, Freakishly muscular, freakishly strong. Uh, and then I hung out with Brian DaCosta, who I had met before at the LA Fit Expo. Um, and the guy is just completely shredded, has fantastic structure and genetics, takes his shirt off and just makes you want to quit bodybuilding and play professional ping pong. You know, you spend time with these guys. And in the past, it used to get me down. But now it just gets me excited because I see what is possible. I see what so many guys are putting in so much work. And while I may never reach... A, a specific look, I look way better than I ever have. And so the passion and the enjoyment that I have for the process is really what drives me at this point. It's not just the fact that, you know, my traps aren't big enough, my pecs aren't big enough, my waist isn't small enough, my abs don't look just right, right? Those are the kind of things that you have no control over, okay? You can control a lot of things. You can control your attitude. You can control your consistency. You can control many things, but muscle insertions, you know, unless I don't even know if there's a surgery, <laughs> like these are things you can't control. I can't control how tall I'm going to be, how short I'm going to be, right? Where my muscle inserts for my bicep tendon, my quadriceps, am I going to have sweep, you know, where my hips are set. I'm sorry, but no amount of waist training is going to give you a smaller waist. Okay. So why, why did I make this video today? Well, it was just because the idea of spending time with these people in the past probably would have got me down about this whole process. You know, when you see guys that have been training a lot less time than you and yet are a lot stronger and a lot more muscular, here I am going to school, uh, trying to learn all I can about, you know, the, the, the best method of training and recovery, the best method of nutrition, coaching people, trying to better myself. And yet there's people out there that, you know, 
they just don't have to put in as much effort. Not that anybody that I hung out with this weekend is in that category. These guys were workhorses. They all trained and ate very specifically. But a certain segment of the population are just going to be genetically predispositioned to have a bit more muscle, to be a bit faster, to be a bit better looking. Insert whatever it is here that kind of drives you. And so, you know, my model growing up, the person that I most wanted to look like, and I very much remember looking at pictures of Arnold Schwarzenegger incline pressing 315. And I always told myself, that's the ticket. If I can get to 315 on the incline like Arnold did, well, I will have these massive pecs. Well, I did 315 for five on the incline, and guess what? Still didn't have those massive pecs. It was only later that I learned that the muscle insertions have so much to do with the way your muscles look and feel. Strength, while a great proponent, is not going to shape the muscle, right? It's only going to fill out the muscle as it's pre-genetically disposed to being. So our insertions are going to determine what our look and feel is as we put on muscle, okay? You're not gonna really be able to change those things, but you will change the look of your physique as you continue to train and put consistently time in. So, and I know it's kind of harped on and bashed over the head, you know, beating a dead horse with this, but try to compare yourself to your previous self, right? So one thing I like about competing is that I can look at pictures now from each time that I've gotten on stage and over the years, and I can see, wow, I really have made some progress. I really don't look like the same guy I did 10 years ago, 20 years ago. And kind of comparing myself to those pictures makes me feel good because I know where I've come. My journey has been my journey. And sure, there's probably guys who are gonna spend a year in the gym or less and already have more muscle, be stronger than me, bigger, faster, better, but that's their journey, right? That's their predisposition. And so I have to be thankful for the gifts that I have. Um, and I'm very happy with the way I look at this point in my life. So I don't want you to think that I feel bad or I'm being negative, but it's just something, it was a realization this weekend that I came to that, you know, like in the past, this might've got me down being around all these uh, handsome Jack dudes, but I'll be honest, it didn't at all. It got me motivated seeing so many people do so many great things in this sport, seeing what's possible now uh, with social media and sharing. And, um, you know, I look forward to following the journey of all the people that I mentioned and probably some other ones that I didn't mention. Um, you know, I got to hang out with, with some people that are a part of the fitness industry, like Kyle Hunt, that I had I'd heard the name lots of times, but never actually had a chance to have a conversation with. And so these are the kind of things that I value at this point. It's the connections. It's as a coach, it's being surrounded by people that, that I have common interests with and that I share things with. And so, yeah, just don't get too down on yourself if you're not making progress. But basically, don't get down on yourself if you don't look like the person that you kind of set out to look like at, at a certain point in your career, right? Like, so yeah, I wanted to look like Arnold. I shot for the stars. Well, maybe I only made it to the moon, but the moon's pretty good. So that's, that's gonna be it for today, guys. I have a test today, that's right. I've had two quizzes, but today is my first test for strength and conditioning. So I'm going to study a little bit more. My man Chad's going to chop this up, get this video out today. Hopefully you enjoyed all the footage over the weekend in Austin. I did a nice interview with Nick Bear. We had tons of training, tons of footage. So if you haven't watched the videos from the weekend, be sure to go back and check those out because uh, I think you'll find the footage between the eating, the training, the talking. It was just a, a really nice eventful weekend around some really inspiring, fantastic people who are doing amazing things. And Thursday, me and Lauren Conlon were dragging Chad with us to Chicago for Junior Nationals. Team Pro Physique is going to be representing. Team LocoFit is going to be representing. So, yeah, if you're in the Chicago area, maybe you can swing by Junior Nationals. Say hello. But that's going to be it for Monday. I got to get back to studying and answering and working. And we'll go from there. So I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Whoa.